What is up guys, Rick? Smack us here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be discussing the accusation that the new event currently ongoing within Destiny 2 Season of the Worthy Guardian Games is rigged. Now what started out as kind of a meme has gotten a lot more serious. A huge portion of the player base is legitimately furious about what is going on within Guardian Games and hurling a lot of accusations everywhere. Well, in this video, we're going to be addressing and somewhat myth-busting a lot of those accusations, but also bringing up some very legitimate concerns and some problems with how Guardian Games is structured. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, you hunters need to win something. And so that's why I'm giving away a pair of Astro A40s, thanks to my partnership with Astro. All you gotta do to enter is tweet at me something with the hashtag RiggedCacus and make sure to be following me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's it, and you'll be entered to win. We'll be announcing the winner in a couple of days. Good luck with that. All right, now let's talk about these Guardian Games accusations. So, Guardian Games has been a little bit interesting. It's obviously a class-based competition. It's based around the fact that you're going out and doing medals, and whatever team puts in overall the most medals, with a little bit of a caveat that we'll have to talk about in a sec, is going to win that day. And the flags in the tower are going to be you know, proportional to what the classes are doing on a given day. So Hunters handily won the first day. But then they've been losing every other day, and Titans have been absolutely dominating. This has weirded a lot of people out. And if you don't believe me that the player base is not happy about this, well, take a look at this honestly super easy to find sample size because there are way too many samples to take from. Now, I do want to make something clear. I play all three classes, and I love all three classes, and I main all three classes at different times depending on the builds and so on. Last season with Season of Dawn, I mained Hunter because I love the infinite ammo shotgun build so much. Currently, I'm playing a lot of Warlock uh, because of the Devour build. I absolutely love that, but normally I am a Titan main, so I'm kind of rooting for Titans, and therefore I made this tweet. Bow down to the dominant class once Titans started winning. And the response, uh, I mean, they had to give you something. Uh, when they published it was going to be weighted against Hunters, it's automatically flawed, and there's no way this represents the true standings. Later on, I tweeted out that Hunters are trying to explain why they're losing with some various methods, and I got some some absolute gems to that one. Rick, stop promoting your ego. It's bad enough as it is. And obviously it's bugged because either way the flags are too far apart to be accurate. We then have, uh, no need to explain a why, uh, Bungie said that they're nerfing hunters for Guardian Games for being too popular. It's easy math, even you titans could understand it. We've got, how does it make sense to, you know, nerf hunters? We've got hunters had to be uh, capped and titans are cheating to victory. We've just got a lot of accusations being thrown around. And then my absolute favorite, which was the guy I had to deal with on my birthday, <laughs> I know you aren't the smartest person, so I'll explain it very simply for you. Number one, hunters were nerfed to level the field. Number two, all of the Titan plebs out there are just deleting and remaking their character for the gold medal. Leave it to Titans to cheese a seasonal event. Pathetic. I did reply like, wait, any class can do this. We're going to talk more about that in a sec. And he said, well, people just don't delete hunters and warlocks. Titans are worth more for a gold medal. Once again, Rick Caucus talks out of his ass and has no clue. What an upstanding citizen. There's also a lot of people saying that playing a Titan in Guardian Games is just easier. They produce more laurels, they get more ability kills, you know, top tree with a skull for it means you don't even need to fire a gun and you can do all of your strike medals in a single strike, including the one that requires you to do four strikes apparently, but that's beside the point. Look, I could easily take all this stuff and say, look, hunters are so mad they can't win one, you guys get off Twitter and start grinding some darn medals. But, hunters are bringing up some very legitimate points here, and there are some absolute concerns that I do want to talk about in fairness to hunters. So let's break these concerns down. Number one, let's talk about Titans cheating, because that accusation is thrown out a ton. Now the evidence for that Titans are cheating is that Titans are winning. 
That That is literally it. That is where the evidence begins and ends. Because Titans are winning, obviously they're cheating more than any other class. Now it could just be that Titans are putting in the work and legitimately winning. Maybe even Warlocks are the ones that are cheating the most and that's why they're always in second place instead of last place. Who really knows? But it's just anecdotal. In fairness, anecdotally, you would expect the class that's cheating the most to be on top. So I guess there's that. But what do people mean when they say cheating? Well, there's two different things. Number one, people are calling deleting characters and remaking characters for medals cheating. Now, I don't think this is really cheating. This is just doing something the game totally allows you to do. You can delete and remake characters at any time, and while it does kind of destroy the spirit of the competition, I definitely didn't do it. A lot of people did because the introductory quest for Guardian Games gives you a free gold medal. So if you just delete a crap ton of characters, you get a crap ton of gold medals. And basically it was done solely to get the machine gun early. Once people got the machine gun, I haven't heard of anyone keeping to delete new characters just to help their faction win. That's for sure. But this accusation actually has a little bit more going on. So someone from my clan actually replied that Titans are the slowest class to remake by about 20 seconds or so. So the people absolutely gunning for the machine gun, the people who got it first in the world were actually specifically deleting hunters it turns out because they were just a little bit faster to get that gold medal, remake, get that gold medal. And when you're doing that like 70 times or however many times they did, those few seconds really, really add up. To which our favorite person replied, that is a straight up lie. People are doing this on Titans the most. The damn flag in the tower is obvious, but Rick and his community are pretty dumb. So, so if you guys are watching this, I'm sorry you had to find out this way. <laughs> I'm sorry, you may be successful in your job, but you're just dumb. Like, I, I, I'm sorry. But overall, this accusation doesn't make a lot of sense because there's nothing limiting it to Titans. And here's the thing, you don't delete your main character. Like, because that's the guy you have to go and do the Shadow Keep quest all over again. You're obviously going to keep your main character and delete your least used character. So if Titans really are getting deleted the most, maybe the Hunter mains and the Warlock mains are to blame. Because they're deleting their least used character, aka Titans, right? But again, the fact that every class can do this, there's not a huge amount of evidence that this is truly impacting the events. But with that being said, oh my goodness, Bungie, why didn't you think about this? Like... It's kind of a feels-bad moment that if I want to get the machine gun in the fastest way possible, you're telling me I need to delete a character? Like, could you have not made this stuff more account-bound, Bungie? This was an oversight in fairness, and so I think it is actually a legitimate concern, even though I don't think it's overwhelmingly impacting the rankings. Let's talk about the other cheating concern, and that is net limiting. So, some of you, in fact a lot of you, have probably seen this video. It's getting passed around on Twitter a ton, and it's showcasing a Guardian putting in medals again, and again, and again. So, there you have it. Like, caught red-handed, this Titan is cheating and putting in way more medals for his faction. Well, Maybe. Again, this is net limiting, and that's essentially a lag switch for PvE. It allows you to put in the metal, and then the game doesn't think you put in the metal, so you can put in it again and again and again. Now, while this might get you rewards, importantly, this doesn't actually count in your triumphs for putting in metals. So you can do this like 10 times, and it won't count for 10 more medals in your triumphs. And so that means it doesn't count as actual medals added. Bungie must have kind of thought about this and enacted some sort of feature that prevents it tracking again and again and again. And that's why, again, the fastest way to get the machine gun was to delete characters, not do this. Like, if this actually worked, people would have the machine gun day one, and, and no one did. So that's something very important. Now, it doesn't count in the triumphs, it doesn't count as an actual medal delivered but does it count in the overall standing probably not because again the triumphs don't register it as an actual medal but it is possible and this is an absolute concern but again the counterpoint comes out you can do this on every class. In fact, I've personally seen videos of all three classes doing this. Like, you can net limit on a Hunter, you can net limit on a Warlock, there's nothing stopping you. Are Titans maybe somehow doing this the most? Possibly. But it's unlikely to even count, and if it does, unless there's a secret underground coalition of net limiting Titans, I don't think it's going to impact the standings.
All right, so moving on from the cheating allegations, let's talk about the waiting allegations. This is the other big one, and you saw a lot of tweets mention this. That is an unfair competition from the get-go. So essentially, Bungie came out and said, look, there is overwhelmingly more hunters than the other classes. Just the amount of people playing hunter, hunters make up about like 50% of the characters used, and then the other two classes exist in the other 50%. So obviously, when you have a competition like this, where you're just counting medals turned in, if there was no waiting, it would be almost impossible for hunters to lose. Like, there'd be seven hunters turning in two medals, the titans may be going absolutely gung-ho, all of them are putting in like seven medals every single time, and it doesn't matter. Now, to me, that made perfect sense, and I was very surprised to see so many people argue that it should have never been weighted. People are essentially saying that, look, more people play hunters. That's just the way it is. If you guys want to win, you need to step it up. Like, if Titans really want to take the victory, they shouldn't have an algorithm helping them. They should actually just do the work. And I guess there is a point to be made there. But which sporting event do you guys watch where one team has allowed more players? Like, seriously, it would be akin to a football game where one team has five more players than the other team. The other team could be the better team, could be trying way harder, making way better plays, but the team with five extra people is probably going to win, right? And so that kind of destroys the spirit of the competition. Weighting the actual medals meant that you actually have a fair competition. And so I think that at a base level, the fact that it was weighted makes total sense. And if you don't think it should be weighted at all, you're basically saying, I'm mad I didn't get an instant victory and I'm mad I actually have to do something to win and instead of just sit there and get it. But before I come across as too mean to hunters, they do kind of have a point in the sense of this. How much is it weighted and are they adjusting the weight during this competition? Now the first part is very important because yes, there are way more hunters than the other classes. But that metric could actually be pretty inconsistent for how Guardian Games plays out because there might be a ton of hunters that exist with like free-to-play players or players that, you know, played a little bit and never played again. If you're just looking at the total amount of hunters created, is that an accurate representation of the player base? Should you be looking at a different metric, for example, the number of active classes? Like, who is actually active, playing the game a reasonable amount, and what classes do they play? If you look at that metric, is it much smaller, the gap between Hunters and the other classes? In that case, Hunters have a huge point here. They could have gotten screwed because Bungie just took the overall classes, and it turns out that, you know, the amount of active players is nowhere near 50%. Maybe it's more like 40, 35%, and Hunters are weighted way less than they really should be. Now that second point is very important too. Is Bungie adjusting the waiting day to day? Because Hunters stormed off with the victory day one and now they can't even get their flags up. Like what is going on? How does that make any sense? It could legitimately just be that the other classes stepped it up or that Hunters got complacent. They all logged on and maybe didn't care about Guardian Games. A lot of people kind of looked at Guardian Games and was like, eh, I'm not really interested in doing more bounties and then just got off. So that would indicate that you have the huge amount of Hunters logging on and winning day one easily and then they kind of don't care and, and log off but the other classes might stick around. But again, if Bungie is actually adjusting the waiting from day to day saying, oh my goodness, hunters aren't waited on enough, they easily won, let's make them waited for less and then we'll increase the waiting for titans and so on. And that's why titans have been destroying and then titans keep destroying, maybe Bungie waits it for the warlock so they actually have a chance. If you keep adjusting the waiting, that could be seen as a little bit of rigging going on. Basically, you're favoring whatever classes didn't do well well for a certain period of time and Bungie hasn't necessarily come out and say that they're adjusting the waiting to my knowledge it's weighted the exact same throughout the entire competition which makes the day one hunter victory and subsequent decline very interesting but potentially not necessarily rigged however it would be nice for Bungie to clarify their waiting system and again hunters do have a point they may have been screwed by bad math here and then moving on from there, the last point that I've seen a ton lately is that 
it's just easier to play a Titan, specifically because you have the insurmountable Skull Fort exotic helmet, and then you combine that with either top tree or probably middle tree Thunder Crash, and that means that, well, you can do what you see in the background gameplay. You can use your melee over and over and over and over and over and over again, like you never stop. As long as you kill one enemy, it's gonna recharge. Now, normally this is a good bit of fun, but it's not necessarily practical because, you know, you often get yoinked by the ads when you go in front of a, a big yellow bar. But when your goal to produce laurels is to do ability kills, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. And so again, I think other classes have a little bit of a point here. This could be legitimately the best way to produce laurels in the entire game. A skull fort middle tree with just infinite melees and those melees are basically mini supers like you're killing a lot every red bar within your landing zone is dead that's a ton of laurels but with that being said i got all the medals on all three of my characters every single day to get that darn machine gun so i played a ton of hunter and warlock and i was going for laurels on all three characters and i can tell you guys for an absolute certainty it's not that far ahead of the other classes Yes, Skullford is very good for laurels, and it might be literally the best thing, but it's not like running Combination Blow, for example, on the Hunter, where if you trigger Combination Blow, every single melee produces laurels. Every single one. Oh, and Arc Staff? Well, it counts for melees and super kills, so it actually produces two laurels for every single kill! If you don't want that, you can use the Shinobu's Vow and then have double skip grenades with double enhanced ashes to assets to get your super back all the time. On the Warlock, oh my goodness, Stormcaller with the Crown of Tempest's exotic helmet was absolutely fantastic. Your abilities recharge your other abilities and that lets you do the bounty so easily. In fact, the bounty triumph for doing like a crap ton, we're talking hundreds of bounties, I grinded out in a single day, guess who I am, and I did all of it on the Warlock, not the Titan, because the Warlock has exotics and perks where using an ability recharges your other abilities. So it just lets you get all of those bounties done so much easier. Not to mention, Top Tree Dawnblade is like infinite melees as well with Celestial Flare. So at the end of the day, if you're using even a half decent abilities build on any of the three characters, you should be getting laurels no problem. And the way that the medals are designed, if you want the gold medal, the gold medal requires you to play a certain amount of an activity. So forges, you have to do four forges. Strikes, you have to do four strikes. It's almost impossible for you to not get your laurels along the way. Again, if you have just like a half decent abilities class. So yeah, Titans will get it maybe one strike earlier, maybe half a strike earlier. And that is maybe, you know, a legitimate concern. Maybe Bungie should have weighted the abilities here. I don't know, but it's not like you can't get the medals in the other class. It isn't that big of a deal as some people are making it seem in my opinion and again I grinded all three characters I never found it like oh no it's time to grind hunter this is gonna take forever no sometimes it was even quicker but overall I think the secret reason behind all of this strife and turmoil is the fact that Guardian Games isn't that great of an event like actually think about what you're doing this event you're just going forth playing the same content you've been playing all season and just maybe using some more ability focused builds that's about it you're doing bounties again and this season has just been the season of the bounty grinders like it really is a feels bad moment there's only one legitimate reward and it's the machine gun and once you get the machine gun you don't have a ton of incentive to keep playing Guardian games. It also is kind of a feel-bad moment, and I really do feel for the Hunters here, where it's not much about personal achievement. Like, you get all seven of your medals done as a Hunter, and you put it in, and you watch that flag go up 0%, and you lose another day. Like, you could be trying your absolute hardest and doing every single medal on your favorite class every single day, and it's not going to matter. In fact, like the beginning few days are so skewed because the fastest way to get the machine gun is to play all three classes. So people aren't even repping their favorite class. Like they're just doing, you know, all these bounties and all these things on whatever class they haven't done for the day to get even more medals. So it's not even a legitimate like class competition, at least in these first few days. 
And so the frustration of this season combined with the frustrations of this event has made some people, well, very salty. But to be honest, can you blame them? I don't think so. I think Bungie needs to, you know, this in concept was kind of a good idea. Maybe in a different season where it wasn't all about grinding bounties beforehand, it, this wouldn't come across as so bad. But I think Bungie needs to take another crack at redesigning this event in the future. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. I can hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.